Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Ready to get back to our study for this week? You know, these are such chaotic times in America. Uh, what with all the political things happening this year, new election. And I wanted to spend a week just reminding us of our roots, that this was a, found, a country founded by Christians with a lot of the Christian principles from the very beginning. It's a very, as you'll see today, a very unique nation in the history of the world. And then we're going to talk about what, how the Bible says that we can get God's blessing on this country, whether it's back, get it back, or or continue it on. The Bible tells us specifically how you and I can be a part of that. And we'll get to that in, in a day or two. Today, I wanted just to talk about the Christian roots that you and I enjoy in the United States of America. And it began before this was even a country. It began with one of the first settlements in America that by the pilgrims in Massachusetts. And it really began before they even got here. Did you know that? On their way here, the pilgrims got together and wrote a document called the Mayflower Compact. And this document not only was how they would govern their new colony, but it was adopted by lots of other places in, in the new world as time went on. It was so thoughtfully written. So the Mayflower Compact is extremely important in our history. And may I just read the starting part of that? Because it clears up any doubt of what they wanted to have happen in the new world, in their, in their settlement. November 11th, 1620. In the name of God, they start out with God. Not in with God, start out. In the name of God, amen. We whose names are underwritten, having taken for the glory of God, we're coming for the glory of God, and for the advancement of the Christian faith and the honor of the king, they still were loyal to the king, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia. Virginia was much bigger at that time, uh, as viewed by England anyway. Do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and of one another, we covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic. They were binding themselves together to govern themselves for the glory of God and the advancement of the gospel. That's why they came. They enjoy religious freedom. This is so historic because it actually marked the first time in history ever since the children of Israel in the Sinai wilderness that free and equal men had voluntarily covenanted together to create their own new civil government based on biblical principles. That's why you're so unique. And I've really thought about that, and I know that's... I, I've. I'm reading that statement, but I've thought it through. I can't, there is no other country based, started on biblical principles, but ours was. Now, interestingly enough, the pilgrims were not the first uh, settlement. Do you remember where the first settlement was? It was Jamestown, Jamestown, Virginia, much more in the Washington, D.C., what we call Washington, D.C. area now. And that was in, as early as 1607. But things didn't go well in Jamestown. In fact, they went poorly. 
and it was a rough go of it between the weather and the Native Americans and disease. Over half of the settlers in Jamestown died. And then those who were left in 1608, it wasn't going much better. And in fact, no one would work. They had come to dig for gold, but they would not dig for crops. And so it looked very dim for them because there was no food. Some people were leaving, go back to England. And then a key thing happened. In September of 1608, they got a new leader by the name of Captain John Smith. It's not clear in history whether he was a Christian believer or not, but he was familiar with the Bible. And that's for sure. Because he remembered a verse, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, at verse 10, says this, If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. That's a simple verse, isn't it? But it has huge ramifications. And John Smith implemented a Bible verse in Jamestown that turned the whole thing around. And isn't that the case? When we apply the Bible, because, because God knows what works and what's right. And John Smith did that. And they, did, they made a law that if you didn't work and help out and, and work the crops and so on, you will not eat. Guess what? There was a lot of eating. There was a lot of working. That was a turning point, a turning point in Jamestown. And Jamestown did succeed. And did laugh. And that Bible verse became kind of the cornerstone of the American, you could say, capitalistic system. That God's way is that hard work is rewarded. And that has been followed through to this day. And that's one of the neat things about America, isn't it? You have the ability to improve your lot in life through hard work or invention or investment. But it's the American way. And it's not an evil way. It's a good way. Because you have the ability to change and move up and improve your lot in life. God's way does work. Well, that was in the founding of America, and it goes on from there. God stayed in the forefront. I, I believe it's all this is why God's blessing stayed on America. And when we come to 1776 and the Declaration of Independence, you see his hand over all of that. The Declaration of Independence speaks of all men are created, created equal. We have a great creator. And that creator was the God of the Bible. Wow. It's so awesome. And we know that that's the God they were talking about because virtually all of the people in America at that time, in the uh, late or mid to late 1700s, Self-proclaimed, 98% claim to be evangelical Christians. We don't know how good they were, but that's what they said they were. When they speak of the Creator, it's the God of the Bible. And God's hand has stayed on this country through that. Hey, we're going to continue a little bit more of our history tomorrow. We want you to know God's hand has been on America, and we want it to stay on America. God bless. See you tomorrow. Come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him.